Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Angelina, a quick question before the movie. Uh, weird places to be. Uh, when you were in high school, Beverly Hills High School, 90210, how amusing a place to, uh, to go to school at? Uh, not at all, really. I um, I was there like two years, and then the, my third year, I uh, went to this continuation section where they usually put the bad kids, but I kind of volunteered to go. So you work at your own pace, and I was kind of, I wasn't allowed on campus, and I was in the back room near the oil well, and you come up the back way, and you go in for a few hours, and you leave. So I actually was kind of, um, I was in the, uh, you know, the basement section of, of Beverly Hills High. Okay, so not as entertaining a place or glamorous as it was portrayed on the TV series? I really don't know, you know, because a lot of people think I grew up with a lot of money and a famous father, but we actually were, were in a little apartment and, and um, didn't have much. And, and you, it's, it's actually very tough, I think, for a lot of kids to go to that school mm -hmm. because there are a lot of kids that don't have um, the computers and have the cars and have everything, and the kids from one side and kids from the other. So it's... You know, it certainly has a lot of things that a lot of opportunities, but it's um, it's um, you know, it's, it's it's very split down the middle. You know, there are a lot of there's just a lot of underprivileged kids that are somebody's, you know, aunt lives in Beverly Hills, and so they get to go, but you know, for the education, but they can't wear the clothes and they can't. So it's kind of you know. Oh. Okay. Well, turning to the movie, a question. Uh, you know, there's a lot's been said about the the train scene, but I'm just curious. The guy operating the train, is that a person that you want to get to know before you shoot that take? I, you know, I'm, I never get nervous about that kind of stuff. And I, I know I was, you know, they said I didn't move quick enough and they pulled me out of the way, but, but I, uh, you know, I, I didn't get, I, I kind of, you know, th those are those experiences in life you have, that was kind of part of it, it was just seeing a train coming at you and then, um, you know. Yeah. I, I don't know how to explain it. You see it in the film and you have it and it's just a moment in my life. I, I just, uh, I remember that day and I remember it being part of, of her journey that, um, but no, I mean, they all, they all were much more nervous than I was. Okay. Now, the accent, you have the New York accent down pat. In fact, when I walked in here, I expected you, you to, to do it. Now, how much work on that to get the um, accent down? Yeah, it was actually really hard. I had a, I talked to somebody for a day or two about it, but I had no coach on set. And I was in a, a Montreal where they spoke French, yeah. so it was it was kind of hard mm -hmm. to keep it up. And um, I I, th I actually thought that everybody was going to be doing it, and I was the only one. So I was a little shocked <laughs> when I got on set. But it was it was hard. Yeah. But uh, so I'm glad that yeah. you, you felt it worked. Yeah. Now you looked very authoritative in the policeman's or policewoman's uniform. Now how did men react to you when you walked off set with that that costume on? Um, I think by the time they, I'd probably got, they probably knew me, the cat, the, the you know, the crew, and I think it was very much like her. I think I think the first few days of shooting, a lot of it, you know, we we started we started with a lot of the stuff in the room, and and um, then when the middle of shooting, when we did a lot of the stunts and the actions, you know, you earn the respect, and then you know, so by the time I was in that, half of them were, you know, could make fun of me or be silly, but they also, uh, you know, they probably had seen me cry, had seen me break down, had seen me up for 14 hours doing it, and you. Have this, they were kind of with me on my own battle, and so they, they felt for me. I think a little as a. Well, so. well, how much sympathy were you getting from the crew in, in the fact that, you know, you're dealing with rats, you're going through some really grungy locations. Well, the crew was going through the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> meanwhile, Denzel is is in in the apartment laying in yeah, bed. Yeah, Denzel's <laughs> in bed the whole time. I know he's lucky. <laughs> no, that's what I was saying. I said, you know, if they if they do, if they pick up and do like a TV series of this, that I want that part. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. And last question. I'm, I'm doing a story on 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 uh, on actors and people who are who are related to famous people. I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, you know, the fact that you know your dad, and you've talked about that before, and I don't want to dwell on that. But do you think having a father who is famous mm -hmm. that Didn't do you ever? Me. Yeah. Do you yeah. well? Do you ever sense that people? treat you differently after they find out who your parents are that ever happened uh, I don't think I, don't, I honestly I, I wouldn't know it is it isn't I, I wouldn't even notice that kind of behavior because those people are, that doesn't I, I don't think my pep, you know I mean it, it would almost be ridiculous because it's I mean if they found out my parent was like a you know some you know um, 
uh, you know, Nobel Prize winning person, then I would understand. But that somebody was an actor, they would treat me different because he's, I, I don't really even understand that, so no. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I don't even get what, what the thing is, you know.